welcome to Healthy Connections with Baxter Regional Medical Center Support House Coordinators. And we're going to take a quick break and come back. These girls have some great information to share today. Hi, and welcome back to Healthy Connections. I am Jody Bodenhammer the coordinator at the Repel Diabetes Center. And I have today with me all of the Community Support House coordinators. So I guess I'll just go around and introduce. I have Diane Van Gulick from the Maruk um, Family Center on Aging. And I have uh, Melissa Hudson from the Pites Cancer Support House. And I have Stephanie Isham from the Schleeman Center for Women's Health Education. Did I get that right, girls? Yep, that's oh right. my goodness, <laughs> <Yep>. yay. <laughs> um, and so we have taken on a different format today, as you can see. We're kind of excited about our new setup and then also the fact that the four of us are going to get together once a week and talk about our upcoming events. Kind of a new take on our Healthy Connection show because who better to talk about our community support um, from Baxter Regional than the four of us girls who do a lot of that at our houses, our individual houses. So I'm really excited. Um, coming up first, I guess we should talk about um, at the Schleeman Center. So Stephanie has an exciting program on February the 27th. Yes, so February 27th, Stacy Helmert with Helmert Hearing Center uh, will be coming over the Schleeman Center. We'll have a lunch and learn. And uh, she's going to talk um, and answer questions about hearing loss. Uh, ways to prevent hearing loss and just kind of have a Q&A session uh, with Stacy. So it's going to be, uh, you know, we'll have food there, we'll have beverages available, and it's a wonderful opportunity to pick her brain. Oh, that's a really good um, idea, especially because <laughs> oftentimes we don't know so much about um, what to watch for or, or, you know, signs and symptoms of hearing loss other than, hey, I can't hear what you said. Right, right. Um, so there may be some things that she can bring out, um, especially for us ladies. Mm -hmm. I know that your house focuses mostly on women's yeah, health. So it's a, it's a girls only club, right? right that's yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I think that's a great idea. And then also, I know that us ladies tend to watch out for our male counterparts and our husbands. And so I know it can be sometimes kind of frustrating if <laughs> Um, you have someone in your life or in your family that maybe is struggling with a hearing issue. Um, so maybe she can give some encouraging support as well for the ladies who maybe have um, a special man in their life that might be having some problems with and that. And that's so, exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, the Schleeman Center, we're about supporting, whether that support is for, is for the lady or for someone who she cares for. Right. You know, a child, a husband. Us ladies, we kind of go on the back burner sometimes. <laughs> so it's a it's a great house to offer to offer sure. these type of, of sessions. Um, I didn't know that there were that there was such a thing as exercise for your ears and, oh, and rehabilitation. Oh, I did not ears. know that either. Yes, so I see that that's one of the topics: a rehab and exercise for your ears. Exercise. So for your ears. I don't know what that's about, but we're come on. You're down gonna learn. learn. <laughs> now you have piqued our interest. We're all gonna <laughs> be out there. Yeah. You know, I, I know those people who can move their ears. I don't think that's probably what she'll be talking <laughs> about. That's probably something more internal. So tell us, Steph, if we need to register for this event, or is this an open to the public? Mm -hmm. So it's open to the public, but okay. we would like for you to register. Okay. Um, you can email me at the Schleeman Center, which is sisom at baxterregional.org. You can go on our website at baxterregional.org and go to the event calendar and register that way, or you can call us at the Schleeman Center. It's 508-2345. Easiest number ever. Great. 508-2345 to register for our upcoming event with Stacy Helmert. Stacy Helmert okay. on the 27th, and it is a lunch and learn, ladies, so I'll feed you, too. All right. Yeah. Great. That's yeah. a great opportunity. Yeah. Next on the list, I have um, a something a little special coming up at the Pites Cancer Support House. So tell us, Melissa, about um, what's happening on March the 2nd. March 2nd is... Wear blue day for colon cancer awareness. I see you're already practicing. Yeah. I love it. Oh, yeah. I missed the memo. <laughs> blue too. So um, <coughs> Dr. Badajo and Barb Dyson and some of the other endoscopy nurses uh -huh. will be meeting at the library. Okay. At Baxter County Library. And they're just going to talk about what to look for and how to stay healthy and you know Barb Dyson she's pretty funny so I'm sure we'll she get to see is. a funny video <laughs> and um, you know just make everyone comfortable good um, so join us in wearing blue blue and as support come to the library it's at let's see here it's at 10 a.m. okay so call and register if you would 508-2273 
And you're, you, as the Pipes Cancer Support House, are sort of sponsoring this event yes. there at the library yes. with, with Barb and Dr. Badjo and the girls from Endoscopy. And such an important day in an event. Um, you know, colon cancer is, is a tough one. Nobody likes to get a colonoscopy. Right. I don't meet anyone in my line of work that says, oh my gosh, I'd love to go <laughs> over right. for a colonoscopy. Right. Yeah. You know, it's something that we dread. I think it's something that in our minds we sometimes get more anxious about than we should. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly there are a lot of experiences shared. I know I've read on the internet some funny things about people who have have gone in and, and not even known until they woke up that it was over, you know, and, and it was just so much more relaxed than they ever thought it could be. Right. Um, and, and I know that that's how our um, endoscopy center works at the hospital. I know that firsthand. My grandmother had colon cancer. And so we, we dealt with that. Um, unfortunately, her screening um, didn't come as early as it probably should. So mm -hmm. a lesson to us all, you know, those right. early screenings, not only for colon cancer, but for breast cancer, for prostate cancer, you know, all of those different things that we can get ahead of and get a leg up yes. on. And it's so affecting important. Yes. younger and younger mm -hmm. generations. Sure, yeah. so, sure. You know. it's, it, this is not your grandpa's right. anything it's anymore. Right. It, exactly. it, is, it is all of us. It's all <coughs> about our health and, and the health and wellness of our entire community. So right. I think that's a great, um, great thing to show support for. We oftentimes show a lot of support, I think, for breast cancer awareness and other, um, other types of cancer. But colon cancer is a big deal, it and, and it affects a lot of people. <coughs> mm -hmm. Plus, yes. it can be treated. And, and that's the other thing I think that we get um, you know, a little bit skeptical of or, or apprehensive about. When I hear the word cancer, it's scary. Right. Yeah. That's a scary word to me. Right. And I know that you guys work so hard there, um, you, Melissa, and your volunteers at the Pites Cancer Support House to help with some of that anxiety, um, you know, tell us about if we come in and we have questions, um, what kind of services that you have there right there at the Pites House? Well, right away when someone's diagnosed with cancer or their loved ones, they can come over and get a binder of information. Perfect. And that eases so much of their anxiety yes. because it gives you an overview of the cancer, treatment options, questions to ask sure. the doctor. Um, what to watch what for. What to eat. What yeah. to watch for. Sure. Um, and it, information. Good. And not things you're reading on the internet. Because the doctors mm. are going to say, please stay away from Google <laughs> Doctor. And yes. Um, yes. so we can give them information and support, give them a care package. Yes. Um, so they know what they're facing with each treatment. Um, and that helps a lot. And with each type of cancer, you know, I right. was amazed at how many different types of support groups you have, how many different types of binders with information that you have. I mean, you guys really cover all the bases and you work directly with the oncologists and the gastroenterologists and all of the individuals that make um, the cancer treatments possible, whether it be the dietitian with food and nutrition or, you know, the nurses over at endoscopy. I mean, it's, it's such a great partnership with all of our medical professionals that the Pites Cancer House has. And I, I'm really so impressed always when I go to other facilities and I kind of puff my chest and say, well, we have this. Do you have that? Yeah. We have this. Right. Do you have that? Yeah. Right. And, and our cancer support house is so amazing and so important to that population of folks. And, and certainly, you know, we, we hate to hear the word cancer, but we're so glad we have the Pites Cancer Support House. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. All right, well, I think we need to take a quick break. Um, we've got a couple more things coming up. Um, I know Diane's a anxious to tell us about a few things as well. So we'll take a quick break, and we'll see you after the, after the commercial. Hi, thanks for joining us. Again, I am Jody Bodenhammer, and I have with me today the coordinators from all of the community support houses at Baxter Regional. Um, I think we probably should take a moment to, to thank the community for the community support that we all receive. Yes. Um, I know that we, we work closely with the Hospital Foundation, um, who helps us provide a lot of our services free of charge. Mm -hmm. um, almost everything that we do um, now is no charge to the patient. Right. And so we just have so many great services, so many great programs mm -hmm. going on all the time. And Stephanie, you had made mention earlier about the website, and mm -hmm. so I wanted to kind of plug that again, too. Mm -hmm. You know, our marketing coordinator, um, Tobias Pugsley, he was the host of this show for a while, and he kind of turned it loose to us girls, which I think is great, but he does so much great um, work with the hospital marketing team, getting um, information out to the public about 
not only the services that we provide, but the quality of service that we provide as well. And, and I think that's such a great thing to, to talk about uh, amongst, um, you know, in the, in the community and with our patients as well. We're not only here serving the county and our surrounding counties, but we're doing a heck of a job at it. Mm -hmm. And our hospital ranks um, top of the nation in our heart care. Our hospital ranks top of the nation in our patient safety. Um, and that's, that's really something that we as um, employees and, and also as community members ourselves should be really proud of. So I'm really glad to know that and I'm really glad to share that with our viewers. And also, you know, certainly go out to the website if you have internet access or even on your phone. It's www.baxterregional.org. Um, and if you click on that little community events calendar, mm -hmm. little calendar over at the, at the corner, you can literally bring up all of the different things that we have, the lunch and learns, the support groups, um, the classes. And Diane's going to talk about, um, in just a second, a couple of different learning sessions she has coming up. But just anything that we have going on um, with the community houses or the hospital in general mm -hmm. is going to be right there at your fingertips. So. Um, big thanks to, like I said, not only to our community for the support, but for the hospital for just making all of these different programs happen and, mm -hmm. and the support that we get from our hospital. I'm, I'm really so pleased and so blessed to call this our home. You know, right. it's great. That's it's right. awesome. So, Diane, tell us a little bit about your learning sessions that you have coming up. So, Jody, I have on March the 2nd, it's actually a, a group that we started back in January uh -huh. called Aging Well with Friends. Okay. And um, it's going to focus on nutrition. The first two months we've been talking about like Good. how to read the labels on those nutrients because it's pretty confusing. Oh, it's there. very There's confusing. so many yes. words you can't even yes. pronounce. So uh, we had Jan Halligan, a uh -huh. dietitian, come over and talk to the folks about, you know, how to look at those labels, read them, know, you know, if they're trying to reduce their sodium. Yes. How to pick out the cereal that they, you know, with less salt, less sugar, whatever they're mm -hmm. looking for. She also, um, in February, talked to them about how to lower their sugar, how to lower their sodium in their diets. Yes, and overall. Still, yeah, yeah. And, but still enjoy mm -hmm. their diet. Sure. You know? So um, in March, March the 2nd, and we always do this on the first Friday at okay. 3 o'clock, we have uh, Tracy Reynolds. She's a speech pathologist over at the hospital, and she's going to come over and just talk about how the, the brain ages. Oh, okay. What's happening to the brain when it's Another aging? interesting topic that I wouldn't even think of um, on a day-to-day, -day, but what a yeah, great idea. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. awesome. So she's, she's going to share some different ways to protect the brain, how uh -huh. to keep it healthy. Hey, it goes longer. right along with that exercise <laughs> that right. Stephanie's <laughs> doing for your ears. <laughs> your yes, exercise. I love it. That's right. I love it. Brain and uh -oh. ear exercise yeah. right here, folks, it's right here in Mountain Home. I love it. <laughs> right in our houses. So. That's great. Yeah. And Again, um, you know, I know that people oftentimes have questions because I get these questions at my office too, but who is um, eligible for this class? Who's, what, sure. what kind of audience are you looking for and who can come right. to these classes? So at the Maroc Center on Aging, we usually see people 65 and older okay. at the house. They come in and uh, exercise with us, lots of different, yes. different things like that. But yeah, 65 and older is kind of our crowd, but sure. you can come in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not going to turn anyone away. Well, and I know recently you've been working on um, a support group that is more geared toward the caregivers. Right. So for right. some of us that may be watching after um, maybe a parent or a grandparent. Exactly. And so I know sometimes there are some exceptions to sure. that rule. Exactly. And that's why I kind of wanted to bring that up because yeah. I think people hear the Center on Aging and they just assume that it's... Um, maybe just geared toward the senior adult. Right. And you do offer a lot of different types of programs there as well. Right, yeah. But I am excited about that learning session. That sounds like um, a really good um, topic. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that you had a great speaker. Yes. Um, yes. And tell us, uh, registration, do we need to call? Sure, yeah. Well, we like for you to give us a call. Let yeah. us know that you're going to come. So, okay. Um, we want to make sure we save you a seat. And I, we can add you to our monthly phone call list where we oh, can call okay. and remind you every month if you would like. A lot of folks like that yes. reminder call. Yes. So it's 508-3880. You can call and call um, right in at the Merck Center. <coughs> yeah. Register and while you're at it if you want to register for any of our other events. My volunteers answer the phone and they are so friendly and very helpful and um, they can tell you about our other classes that are coming up. They are, they are so nice, and I know oftentimes, um, you know, we're right next door to one another, 
Um, and for those of you that have not visited us at the community support houses, at Baxter Regional, as you're coming up Hospital Drive there, you're going to see the emergency room entrance over to the left-hand side. And there's a, an actually a large parking lot across the street there um, where there are a, where there's a row of houses. These houses look like residentials. Um, right, they were actually yeah. purchased or donated to the hospital from different entities. And what the hospital has done is taken all of these houses now and use them for some type of community outreach or support. Right. So not only do the four of us live there um, on a regular basis, and, and if I live there, I mean, sometimes I feel like we're there yeah. all the time, <laughs> um, but we also have our community paramedics there and our Fairlam Senior Health Clinic. Right, so right. we all work really closely together. And, and you and I kind of share a common bond with a lot of our folks coming mm -hmm. and going. So I know that, you know, oftentimes I... I see my patients from the diabetes center going over to your house for education or for mm -hmm. exercise. Right, right. And and then I know that you know I share other patients with Melissa. I know I share some patients with Stephanie. So we all are kind of working together on nice. different projects. But anytime if you're in the neighborhood, um, if you're interested in any of the services or knowing more about any of the services, we certainly have an open door policy. And I know most of us. Um, keep our doors open from 9 to 4 every single day. Right. So we're there Monday through Friday. Um, and if we're not in the building, our volunteers, volunteers are, are there, there to help. And, and that's a great come thing. come in for a tour yeah. of yeah. any of the houses. Sure. We love really to show our houses off. When you walk in the house and mm -hmm. you get a tour of what right. we have available. We have yes. tons, tons of resources in there, brochures. If you, if you um, went to the doctor and he gave you a new diagnosis, whatever it might be, um, our houses probably have brochures, information education. about. On just about everything. Yeah. I, th I would think so. And, yeah. and education. And that's the thing. Um, it's such a, a key piece of our health care these days because even if we have the most amazing primary care doctor and we have the best here in we Mountain do. Home, and then we have a team of maybe even specialty doctors like the oncologist or the women's health center, um, you know, we still see the need, or Dr. Lipschitz, we still see the need for our, our patients to have information themselves, to go home, right. to take care of themselves at home, and then also sometimes, as we were talking about earlier, you know, to help with a family member. Mm -hmm. And I know I struggled with that a lot um, when my grandfather was diagnosed with um, Alzheimer's and dementia, and I was able to get some resources mm -hmm. from you. I was able to pick up some information from the from the Fairland Center where we had had him um, evaluated for his disease, and just a, a great little you know just a, a walk down the road there and being able to get all the information <coughs> right there together. Right there. And I, I don't know how I would have um, managed to help my family. You know, yeah. we we were able to take care of my grandfather, thankfully, but. Mm -hmm. Gosh, without, even as a nurse, without knowing some of that first-hand information, right. it's kind of tough. So. Well, you know, the houses, I think, they're there to help empower our mm -hmm. community to be proactive yes. in their health care. I agree. To, to see their physician or their provider as their partner in their health. Not yes. Their doctor's not telling them what to do. They go in already having their options right. in front of them. And that's, I mean, that is such an uh, an easy thing to think about. But then when you start putting pencil to paper sometimes and trying to keep up with everything, I think mm -hmm. is what we, we have a struggle with, too. So, What do you got going on at the diabetes house? Well, you know, I, I think that we just have our, for, for the next few weeks, we're just running our regular scheduled diabetes education programs. And certainly if anybody has questions about those, send them my way. But um, my phone number there at the office is 508-1765, and I'm certainly available for phone consultations as well. I get a lot of those every day. Um, so yeah, we, we do um, have such great um, programs and information to share. And let's do our phone numbers one more time sure. in case anybody wants to sign up for any of these great events. So Diane, you've got March 2nd. Okay, March 2nd is our Aging Well with Friends group, and that number is 508-3880. Great, and I am the Repel Diabetes Center. We have our ongoing diabetes education classes, and that's 508-1765. Melissa? Heights Cancer Support House at 508-CARE-2273. Great, and Stephanie? Schleeman Center for Women's Health Education at 508-2345. Awesome, and just give us a call anytime. We'll be back next week with some more information about our upcoming events, and um, have a great afternoon.